All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Alternative Energy Committee meeting of the town of Cohasset. Uh, under Massachusetts state law, we're allowed to do this virtually, and we are now recording. And we have a quorum. Four of our six uh, members are here today. And I want to apologize for the um, confusion last week. And hopefully Pat will help me be better going forward so that we can get the agendas in time and do the meetings as we planned. Um, David McMorris, you're here. And why don't we just quickly go around and introduce ourselves. And then David, we'd invite you to introduce yourself um, and your interests. My name is Tanya Bodell. I'm the chair of the Alternative Energy Committee. And I have been a consultant to the power sector and energy industries for more than 30 years. Uh, hi, David. I'm Steve Wenner, a longtime member of the Alternative Energy Committee, and right now I'm chair of the Aggregation Subcommittee. Hi, Pat Gooding, member of the AEC. Debbie Cook, member of the AEC. And David, do you want to unmute yourself and introduce Hi, yourself? I'm, I'm David McMorris. I'm, I'm just observing. I'm interested in the uh, microgrid and brick section of the agenda. OK, very good. Thank you. Um, well, welcome. OK, we're going to try to go this quickly. Um, now that we've done the welcome and introductions, we're going to the approval of the meeting minutes, March 10th, 2022. Thank you again, Debbie, for taking such excellent meeting minutes. Um, I'll give everybody a moment to review if you haven't already, and then I'd be looking for a motion to approve. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, so we have a movement to approve the minutes by Steve, a second from Pat Gooding. We have to do a roll call vote. Tanya Bodell, aye. Steve Winter, aye. Pat Gooding, aye. Debbie Cook, aye. All right, the minutes pass unanimously. Thank you. Um, Earth Day and EcoFest, do we have any updates? I sent something out, um, I don't know, Monday or Tuesday, something like that, uh, with a, asking people to sign up. If you didn't get the email, let me know. Um, I think I got a reply from Debbie and Josh, and we're, the timing is 8.30 to 2.30, like it was last year. Sort of the same setup. We'll have a table provided by the town, and we just have to identify the materials, bring the materials that we want to hand out or have visible to the public. And um, I think Debbie was going to bring her car like she did last year just to yeah. people see it. Um, so I had sent out in that email asking folks for suggestions of things that we wanted to hand out. Steve, I know you had mentioned information on community aggregation. So let's just coordinate. We can do that offline if you want and figure out, you know, how to get the copies. I'm going to go and set up at 830. And I think Debbie said she's going to come as well. So I'll coordinate with yep. anyone who has materials so that we can have them on hand at nine o'clock when the thing officially opens, which is the cleanup. Um, okay, this cleanup. is the 20, 29th. You're talking about the EcoFest or the- no, I'm uh, talking about Earth Day. Oh, Earth, Earth Day. Oh, okay. The Earth Day cleanup is Saturday. The rain date is Sunday. And that's- um, you know, there's probably going to be three or four tables set up like they have in the past right outside town hall and people come and get the bags and volunteer to do a cleanup around town. Okay. So and that's this Saturday in two days. That's this Saturday. Okay, EcoFest is next week. On yep, Friday, the 29th. On the 29th. Yep. Okay. And, uh, so uh, we also have um, NICO, which is the New England... I don't know what their whole acronym stands for, but David Langley is supposed to be there as a mass save vendor, providing some materials for people, you know, on energy improvements and things like that. So he's supposed to be sharing our table as well. 
Okay, very good. Um, so I'll send you my time, Pat. So I'll fill in whatever is needed. And then I'm also um, looking to have a poster on community aggregation printed up in time. Okay, if you need me to pick stuff up, just let me know. Okay, very good. Great. Uh, okay, the next item is our um, Life on the Rocks. Congratulations. I thought the articles came out beautifully. I am sad that they could not Photoshop Pat into the cover, but Pat, you did make it with us on the inside page, but still, I was pretty clear that I wanted you on the cover, so I'm sorry about that, but um, very happy about our articles. How do, how do people feel? I thought they looked great. Nice job uh, writing all the rest of the stuff and getting all the facts, so thank you. I think people did a very nice job on their articles, and I've gotten compliments from folks. So I think it's good that we're able to publicize in that way. So can I ask a question about that, Tanya? Can we, um, can we put a copy of that at our table for people to look at? Ooh, yes. I wonder if there's some extra copies that we can get from Melissa. They don't um, what have digital, they don't have a div digital version of that, right? That you can. No, no, she does. Okay. She does. I just, just it's, I'm sure it's copyrighted. Um, I'll distribute the digital version for everybody's files, but I'll ask her if she has some extra hard copies that we can put out. That would be good for both EcoFest and for Earth Day, I think. Yep. No, she might be able to even print some. We'll see. Um, good suggestions. Okay, that's an action item for me to reach out to Melissa and see if we can get some hard copies of Life on the Rocks. Okay, Community Choice Aggregation Subcommittee, Steve, where are we on? Okay, I, I spoke to John Aurora today. There's no good news. Uh, he's really disgusted. Uh, the DPU has not um, replied to our con compliance filing or replied to any of the towns about the compliance filing. Um, so he's uh, their lawyer is looking into it as to what what is the delay or this stupid thing all 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 they requested all the dpu requested were some minor editing changes like changing the select men to the select board <laughs> stupid things like that anyways um uh, i'm thinking back of of asking uh, our representative, Joan Moschino, if she can uh, prod them a little bit to figure out, you know, what they're doing. It's really inexcusable, I think. Uh, I asked him about uh, the bidding, uh, what what's happening in the market. And he says that the uh, energy prices are very unstable yet, but he is going out there. They're, they're uh, talking to uh, energy suppliers for those towns they represent that are renewing their aggregation programs. So, Apparently, they have you know he has some towns where he can he can actually um, test the test the uh, the waters for the, the uh, uh, energy prices. Um, so hopefully he can give us uh, more insight at some point. Um, let's see. I guess that's it. All I all I can say about that. Um, yeah. Okay. Good, and um, you're, you're working on a marketing plan, so when it's oh, time, uh, you'll be able yes, to. Oh, Debbie, yes, uh, Debbie and I talked to uh, Daria and Daria um, before she left. Uh, Debbie, you want to summarize that conversation? Sure. Actually, she, um, she gave us contact. She gave us information about timelines and basically what um, good energy will provide and you know and and also the understanding that everything that we put out will have to be approved by good energy and you know, obviously the town too um so or or the alternative energy i wasn't clear about on the town side exactly who is to approve but um but we do have some contacts and um so far, you know, we haven't really gotten started because there's, you know, there's, um, 
I mean, there's been no action and, you know, we sort of know what we're going to be doing and where we're going to be putting it. But, um, but as far as trying to do things in advance, it didn't make sense because we need more information about, you know, sort of, um, time, you know, details to, to put out. So, um, so that's kind of where we are right now. And we have a whole, um, you know, folder of information and ways to progress. And we do have a spreadsheet, by the way, that we worked up a long time ago uh, yep. with uh, an outline of the marketing plan, what we're going to do. So it's not. So you're working off of that. Yeah, the, the spreadsheet. we'll be working off of that, basically. Good. Good. I mean, there's nothing yet to just kick this into motion. So they they said basically it's premature to do anything right now because um, the process really is, you know, well, at least the way they I understood, it's pretty prescribed. And, um, and what we do is just add meat to the bones of it. Um, but it's, there's a lot of things that are mandated that, you know, it's kind of um, pretty prescribed. Um, let's see. Oh. I can ask a quick question. Pat, Pat, you have a question? Yeah, so does it make sense for us to have anything about community aggregation at Earth Day and EcoFest, or are we saying it's premature, or should we just have sort of a what it is, you know, type of, um, rather than sort of a marketing? Yeah, what we're lacking is, you know, what, what the prices are going to be, basically. Yeah. But I, I see, I, I think it would be appropriate to have uh, both an Earth Day and EcoFest uh, aggregation okay. poster there and be uh, be prepared to answer people's questions about the the program. We have to tell them, though, that uh, uh, our energy broker that we contracted with has not uh, gone out to bid yet, so we're not sure what the prices will be. But okay, I think it's appropriate to help educate people about it. Right. And we've done that. We have the materials, so we can, we've yeah. done that before. Okay, great. Any other questions on the community choice aggregation? No. Okay, good. Okay, the Cohasset microgrid project and BRIC grant. I apologize, David, there's not going to be much said on this, but I'm happy to send you some of the presentations we've been making to the select board, the water commission, and the um, uh, sewer, committee, sewer committee and, and the capital planning committee. We've been doing a lot of dog and pony shows explaining the microgrid, why we think it's the most effective, cost-effective approach for improving the town's power supply. Um, we have submitted a BRIC grant as of January for a total of um, total project cost of 36 million of which FEMA, if it's awarded, would pay for 75%. We think that we can get some funding for the other 25% outside of the town. Um, but even without that other funding, back of the envelope calculations indicate that the assets would pay for themselves because they can be sold into the marketplace outside of outage periods. Um, we've done an extensive amount, 10 months of work with National Grid thinking about what that microgrid looks like, the potential design. Um, this is outside of National Grid's normal approach to things. So the work they've done with us has been done. Normally we'd have to pay for it. They've been do doing it on their own dime um, out of interest in looking at the microgrid issues. Um, but it is not, uh, they currently don't have a microgrid tariff. They have no way to recover the costs our hope is by going through this process, perhaps some of that could be picked up by National Grid, but the initiative is outside of their um, regulatory mandates and measurements, and therefore would not be recoverable without a separate microgrid tariff. I have sent a copy of the presentation we made to the Capital Planning Committee to the um, chair of the DPU to let him know this is happening in Cohasset and 
Um, we broke it into two parts. One is an upfront study for a million dollars of which 75% if awarded would be covered. The other is um, 35 million for the actual implementation. Um, just so everyone knows, we were thinking of putting that in the warrant as an article to fund the upfront um, million dollars as a revolver in anticipation of getting the 75% award. Um, through the course of the discussions, it became clear that there were questions we didn't have the answer to, and also that we might, it, it was sort of premature to put it on the warrant article at this point without knowing whether or not we got the funding. So we, um, it wasn't just us, it wasn't me, it was sort of collaboratively the liaison for the select board and the capital planning committee and uh, the um, advisory committee thought it would be best if we pulled it. So it is not an article for funding in the warrant, um, mainly because we didn't have the information we needed to help sell it. And it's a little bit premature until we get the award, if we get the award. So we won't know about the award until June or July. Um, in the meantime, I did reach out to MassCEC to see if they'd be interested in helping to fund the upfront study, and they are. So they thought that they could cover some of the costs that's not covered by the federal government. And that that's important because um, in addition to some of the information we didn't have available to us, we also realized that there's a lot of risk we would pay, the town could pay for that study and get nothing out of it. So we think we can get, um, if we're wow. awarded the funding from FEMA, we can also get some mass CEC funding and minimize the cost and the risk to the town. And um, we're just gonna wait and see what happens with the FEMA grant before we move forward with the funding um, request. Are there any questions on that? Um, David, I can also refer you to um, places in our meeting minutes where we included the presentations we had made. I, I appreciate that. I just, I did want to say I, I read the articles in the Life on the Rocks and was very impressed with them. I think you guys have done a tremendous amount of work. Um, the one thing I, I did have a question on it though, because I don't, what, what is a rotational generator? Mm -hmm. So a rotational generator is something most people are very familiar with. It's like a typical diesel generator. It has an internal combustion engine and it rotates. The rotating generator, we call it a rotating generator without reference to the fuel because that hasn't been determined yet. The um, grant application suggests that it would either be renewable natural gas or a hydrogen fuel just to keep it clean. Um, there are other microgrids that have used natural gas um, that sort of goes against our desire for reliability and resiliency, but a natural gas fired reciprocating engine, for example, an eight megawatt reciprocating engine or four two megawatt engines um, could, could be what we ultimately land on, but that would be part of the first phase study. Um, the other thing about the rotating generator is it's a rotating generator because that type of rotation and inertia is needed for system reliability when it's in microgrid mode. So you can't have a microgrid with just solar and batteries. There needs to be some inertia and rotating generators are a um, good way of providing that. I've got a question, Tanya. Does that mean mm -hmm. that you have to rule out uh, fuel cell? type of generators or is that? So the fuel cells operate more like batteries. And I think this is again, part of phase one, which is specifying what kind of equipment we would need for the generation side, the storage side and the transportation side um, of the backbone of the microgrid and the switches. So it'd be part of phase one, nothing's rolled out right now. I, I did have one other question. Sure. Is the, is the brick application or the brick work available anywhere for review? Um, yeah, actually, so yes and no. It was submitted online um, and I've been meaning to save a copy of what was submitted through FEMA Go. Um, 
just to be able to download it so people can have a copy. But based on your request, Debbie, if you could make that an action item for Tanya to download it and put it into a um, reviewable format. Yeah. Well, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Tanya, I, I sent you um, an article. I don't know if you got it in the about that battery. Had you seen that before? I yes, very familiar. So the battery in the article that Pat sent me is a molten salt battery, right, Pat? That's the one yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. And the molten salt is used for long duration storage, whereas most of the batteries that are being implemented today are short term, two hour or four hour batteries, which means they can operate at two hours for two hours at their maximum capacity. Um, those are the least expensive on a dollar per megawatt basis. The um, four hour batteries can operate for four hours at their maximum capacity. The molten salt can operate at around 10 hours at its um, total capacity. The the challenge is in order to get that longer duration storage and feedback, which is good for a microgrid application. Um, the problem with it is it has like a 55% efficiency factor. So you have to put in for every 0.55 megawatts you take out, you have to put in one megawatt of electricity. Whereas with the batteries, you can get almost a, um, 95 to 99% out for every megawatt you put in. I guess for the application that they were referring to, they have like, I, I saw it along the Columbia River, the amount of solar arrays was staggering. I mean, it goes on for tens of miles. So maybe they just have so much generation that that's not as much of an issue for them. Yeah, and that's exactly when the long duration molten salt um, or other long duration solutions are the best is when you have excess energy during certain periods of the year or certain times of the day, and you can use that excess energy. So the thought is as renewables get more and more integrated into the system, the, there will be times where there is too much generation. We have it now, actually. <laughs> in, in upstate Maine, we have negative prices quite frequently. And the same thing with upstate New York, same thing with West Texas, same thing with Pacific Northwest. And that excess generation creates negative prices where they're paying somebody to take the energy. In that case, who cares what the efficiency factor is? Like, we'll take your energy, we'll store it, and then use it a month later, a week later. You know, in, in the Pacific Northwest, it's very seasonal. They have their spring freshet. Um, as they do in New Brunswick and, and upstate Maine. So, and, and Quebec, obviously. So the spring freshet are periods of time where there's excess energy due to the, the snow thaw and the, the water flow through the generators and the hydroelectricity generators. And that's when a long duration storage can work the best. Just out of curiosity, um, have you, or do you know of people that are working on the solid state type batteries for you know, commercial use? I know they're starting to look at them for car batteries and stuff like that. Are they, would that be something in the future that might be helpful to an yeah, I mean, application? There's a lot of um, technology that's being developed right now and no clear front runner. Thank you. Yep. Great questions and great article. Anything else on the class of microgrid project and brick grant? Okay, we're gonna do speed dating because um, Steve, you're our quorum and I know you have a dinner date. Um, so quickly, electric, electric school bus demonstration project, NLX has um, provided us with a bid that gets us close to par with the existing price being paid for diesel, um, including they, they're including um, the fuel, the electricity costs. And so this becomes very promising and it's part of a mass CEC funded projects project that would allow the town get, to get to know the electric school buses. The next step 
is um, they're putting together four different proposals with different time periods, uh, lease to own versus just a lease and what the price would be for each of those. The lowest cost, I guess, is the five-year uh, lease only. And we would also have a national grid install the charging stations, level two charging stations for free for the school bus. Um, so we're trying to get a letter of, um, letter of intent signed and a non-disclosure agreement signed so that we can get the details of these proposals from NLX. So that's moving along and, and we're definitely in pole position with them for that. It's just a question of, does the school think it's a, it's a good idea? Any questions on that before we go to the solar energy RFP? Okay, solar energy RFP still um, on hold. We are waiting for third party sites to come to fruition. And once they do, we would take those to the water plant and the um, uh, sewer commission to see if they wanted to purchase that energy from in-town solar energy arrays placed on third party sites such as stop and shop or um, perhaps some parking spaces where we can do carports. So, but that's, we're still waiting for the third parties to come, come to the table on that. Um, nothing on community solar, sustainability and net zero goals. I still have an action item to try to get our consultant underway to do the greenhouse gas um, inventory. Uh, town hall renovation, I don't think we have an update on that. And then our data report, before I move to the data report, is there anything else on the initiatives that we have underway? Okay. Data report, we don't have a data report um, with updated information on the electric vehicle charging, but we did at the March, and we mentioned this last meeting, at the March quarterly presentation to the select board, we did suggest that it's time to start charging for the charging, that um, we were getting enough unique users and they were repeat customers, and sorry, Steve, I know you're one of them. Um, but repeat customers, and the cost was getting to the point where at $500 a month, um, it was probably time for the town to start charging the users for the electricity. Um, so they're going to think on that, and at our next meeting, we'll give them more information and a recommendation, but we can talk about that at a future meeting. Solar Energy Array has saved more than $250,000 for the town so far. So we would like to continue to try to get those savings. And um, the gas-fired backup generator data, we're still going through to try to understand who has the gas-fired backup generators, how big are they, what type of homes, and um, figure out if there's something we can do with respect to incorporation into a microgrid or other solution. Any questions on the data report? All right, this is, David, not our normal meeting. We're not normally done in 30 minutes, but... Um, this is just one of those quick meetings with quick updates. Um, matters not reasonably known in advance. Is there any matter not reasonably known in advance or an item to put on the next agenda? Um, can I just ask a question? Uh, did we get any input from the select board in terms of adding another committee member at the update? You know, I continue to ask for that. So put a, Debbie, if you can do an action item for me to ping Corey oh. again about the fact that we need another member. And, um, you know, we did raise this at the quarterly meeting and they all nodded their heads and said, oh yeah, you definitely need to get a seventh member, but we still don't have a seventh member. Okay. And just a reminder to people, uh, please send me back stuff that needs to be copied or picked up or anything. So I know for uh, Saturday, get it ahead of time. Perfect. Okay. Anything else? All right, David, thank you for joining us. We normally meet the second Thursday of every month. So our next meeting is going to be Thursday, May 12th and June 9th, Thursday, June 9th will be our schedule. And Pat, an action item for Pat is to remind me so that we can get our agenda in on time 
over the course of the three years, there have been a very few times where I've missed the deadline and yet they happen and it's very frustrating to everybody. So thank you for your patience and Pat, thank you for your future nudges. Thank you for doing doing it. (laughs) Um, okay. So right. thank you everybody. I didn't entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Pat. Thank you, Steve. Um, we have a motion and a second. No discussion is needed. All in favor say aye. We don't have to do a roll call vote on this aye. one. I don't think. Aye. aye. Have a good and, night. Um, everyone. We're adjourned. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Good night. All right.